Hello everybody, welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. My name is Chris and this is the Subscriber Designs episode 21. Now the very first design is the Annihilator Mark 1 and this is made by Rolf Copter KK LOL. <laughs> A very unique name and uh, he has his own YouTube channel so I'll link that if that's okay with him. So without wasting any more time, let's quickly get on to this. Now, when you first look at this, the shape is very, very unique. I've never seen a shape like this that I can recall. I mean, it's like a little beetle, but it's like this, it flies, this whole thing flies. So we'll test that out soon enough. And if you have a look here, we have a whole bunch of uh, bullets or missiles, whatever you like to call them, and you will see them within here, within these twin barrels. So let's quickly zoom in and take a look. So we have a whole bunch of uh, battery banks, a whole lot here, and there are some down there somewhere that's a little hard to see. The main structure appears to be connected through this here, this object, which goes all the way down there, as you can see, and more structures here. It's very unusually shaped. I'd Even I'd struggle making this a little, given the shape. Let's take a look here. Yeah. So pretty much he's made the general shape using these like fuselages and then he's overlapped it perhaps with these these panels here. That's probably what's happened. Anyway, let's quickly fire a couple of these missiles. <laughs> yeah, cause see how this goes. Yeah, look at that. I like the way they look. They're always so cool and fascinating, but it doesn't destroy buildings. That's too bad. Although, like when it comes to destroying buildings, it's not about speed. <laughs> it tends to be just about mass and I'll show you in a second. Oh, that didn't do anything. I hope that destroyed the building, but not. What if we hit that flag here? There's this long pole. That's going to be a little hard to hit. Might have to go a little close range. Let's quickly try that out. And on a side note, I'll... Oh, great. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, no worries. Let's just try and maneuver this. Fire. Oh, keep that off. Fire. Uh, great. This isn't going to work. We need to... Restart. Oh no. Yeah, we need to restart. That's too bad. <laughs> oh, that, that always happens with these rover wheels. They're so derpy. Like one little hit and it's like, oh yeah, you're all done. Like you'd think that they're very strong, but no, they're like, they're so weak. So damn weak. Hmm. Uh, but although in here we got quite a few parts, so the mass is quite high. A lot of pressure on these wheels. Alright, down here they should be fine. Down the hill, yep. Yeah, so it's been about two years and several months now ever since we started the channel. So it's been quite a while. Haven't really accomplished much. I mean, you know, playing games doesn't really get you anywhere. But hey, that's the way it is. And I suppose we can just test out the flying of this craft. Let's do that. Perhaps we should just be a little stationary so I'm gonna hold the brakes slow down alrighty let's see how we go and uh, last episode I asked you guys what kind of project I would be you know the future thing that we'd make and majority of you suggested that we make some sort of asteroid thing like an asteroid station or base and I think that the best idea would be to create a an asteroid base but it would be kind of like an alien base in a way it won't have like alien parts or anything because it's kind of part of the storyline that I'm making uh, which I've already planned in my head so we'll see how that goes but hey that should be interesting an asteroid base with a whole bunch of asteroids I figure we might as well get like an E-class asteroid and have a whole bunch of other asteroids wrapped around it and someone did suggest that so thank you for Whoever suggested that, I, I don't have your name. Anyway, you know who you are. Let's, I don't know, let's try and land on that building there in the VAB. I don't think we'll do it, but it's quite difficult. Are we... We are still going up. Okay, down a little. Up again. At the moment, yes, I, I do read books, by the way. And I'm, I'm reading a book known as Earth Unaware by Orson Scott Card and Aaron Johnston. If you guys like reading books, it's... It's an interesting sci-fi book. I'm like, I'm halfway through so far. Maybe I'll explain it in the future, perhaps. I don't know. Just you guys read it if you like. I think you can uh, listen to it online as an audiobook. 
yeah, you could do that. I think it's on YouTube, so I don't know. If you guys have like several hours worth of time, you could do that. Oh, dude, look, we can't even land this thing. We're so bad. Alright, whatever. Let's try and land it safely somewhere. Not on the VAB. Because we can't do that. We suck. Come on, land. Also, on, a, on another note, the career mode in KSP. Like, every time I, I create a new profile, all the buildings are already fully upgraded. Yeah, I think it's a bug with a 0 0.90 64-bit version of KSP. And I think it's exclusive to 64-bit version. Uh, I've looked online to see if there's like a way to... Oh, we're going to have an interesting landing here. Yeah, I looked online to see if there was like a way to solve it. I, and there was like... Someone said like copy this code and put it here. And I did that, but that didn't make a difference because the code that I copied was like the exact same code that was already in the code. So it was like, you know, futile. So, yeah, that's... that's Yeah, I won't be playing career mode because I won't bother. Like, otherwise, I have to download like the 32-bit version of KSP and I don't want to. I'm not interested in career mode. I just like watching videos online anyway about that kind of stuff. So there we go. I, I guess we should just fire the rest. We can't even land it. It's too difficult to land. Be but before we almost had it and now we are... Okay, I've throttled down. Throw down a little more. Okay, we're like moving backwards for reasons that should not be correct. <laughs> that move backwards. Uh, should we have the brakes on? No, probably not. Uh -huh, come on, go down. Okay, up. Thank you. Up. Oh no. Oh no. No. Got at the lap. Yeah. Woof. Woof. Hey, Ritik, you're so pro. You're no longer noob. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that, guys. That's good stuff. Thank you for the kind words. Anyway, let's proceed. Alright, let's quickly, like, smash into one of those buildings, like, 12 meters per second. And I'll show you the magic. Ugh, this thing. Turn, please. Yeah, so I, I am looking forward to the project with the asteroids. Should be interesting. I, I won't say it's difficult. I am planning on doing the asteroids around Ilu. And that was recommended to me by a subscriber with a whole bunch of other subscribers liking what that guy said. So that's what we're going to do around Ilu. Why Elu? I don't know. You know, I don't, no one really goes to Elu, do they? <laughs> it's like it's it's the Christmas planet. That's what it is. To me, it's the Christmas planet, with the weirdest orbit. Actually, second weirdest orbit. The first would be Moho. Moho has like the weirdest orbit. Yeah. Don't know why. Anyways, there we go. Maybe we can fire from here. Let's see if we can get something. Spacebar. Spacebar. All right. Uh, VAB again. Yeah. Oof. Man, that should have destroyed it. Come on, you can't tell me that didn't destroy it. Yeah. No, nothing again. No. <laughs> that explosion looks huge. Really, like, no scratch. Wow, that was a weird one. What was that? Is there something wrong with it? Hmm. What is this? Ah, oh, the ram air intakes sticking out through the side. Huh. Alright, well, we're almost there at the building. We'll quickly hit it. And then we will proceed to the next craft, which will be the last craft for this episode because I'm a little sick and tired of playing KSP for the day. Um, I have other things to do, like reading the book. <laughs> Educating myself in fiction. <laughs> so, not really. Anyways, here we go. Let's see if we can destroy this. See? Look at that. Look how easy it is to destroy that. And yet, a missile does nothing. <laughs> That's so illogical. Anyway, I think it's because of the mass. There's just so much mass on this, and you know, it doesn't really matter what kind of velocity you're traveling at. It's just any little poke will do the job. As you might have seen in that video that we made, where we destroyed the entire, well, at least most of the KC, except for one part on the damn runway, the damn thing. Oh, great, this destroyed. See these wheels, dude. They're just so fragile. Unbelievably fragile and yet they appear to be so strong. They're not. They're so weak Anyways, this is a nice design. I like it, but the damn wheels those wheels <laughs> And let's proceed the next design is a very interesting one which I had to troubleshoot Originally, I started recording this without testing out the parts because I just want I wanted to do that just to see if I could figure everything out in the first go uh, That didn't really go the 
the way it was planned. Uh, this does not work properly. I'll tell you why. The If you take a look here, you may notice that the center of lift is much higher than the center of mass. Once you reach a speed of around 100 meters per second after like launching at full throttle, it will start, the pitch will change gradually and it will get worse to the point where this is just unbearable to fly. Now the problem of course is the lift is too high from the center of mass and I easily fixed that by making a Mark II version. Yay! I'm not too sure if the problem had occurred with the previous version of KSP because this was made in a, in a previous version. And now if you take a look, I've solved the issue. It's much more closer now to the lift and mass and so it's very stable. In fact, I should add some struts. Well, these aren't struts. <laughs> Those are fuel ducts that I clicked just then. All right, let's go up. Don't really need struts actually, but you know, I'll put them on just in case. Just in case you guys are going to do some sort of crazy stuff. Yeah, and so after we end up making the asteroid base, I'll make some sort of fleet of ships with like missiles. If you've ever, if you've ever seen the Enders game film, like, like the ending with that big fight, I'm going to try and do something like that without the CG, but you know, just saying. I'm not that good, but you know, I'll, I'll try my best. Anyways, let's uh, F5 that so we can revert quick save easily. And boom, let's see. So the recommendation for this craft, and this is what Wolfguide said. Uh, Wolfguide is the creator of this Beetle Cruiser. He said that, did I not say that before, that this was Wolfguide who made this? Oh great, I'm sorry, yeah, Wolfguide made this. Uh, and he quickly gave me like a description. He said, I have tested its design a couple of times to be sure you will have no trouble lifting it to orbit. I had a problem, but no worries. I fixed it nice and easy. Let's do about there. Okay. I suggest reaching a speed of 100 meters per second and keep it close to it as possible during the stage. Once at 12,000 meters height, it is safe to tilt the craft to the desired direction to begin the orbital stage. Screenshot of the craft is spaces. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. This, this build was built in SPH, not VAB. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, occasionally when I get a submission from one of you guys, it might have been built in the VAB, but I always launch it in the SPH, because it doesn't really matter. Like, they're both the same when it comes to launching. The only difference is when you're, you know, trying to configure it with parts and etc. So, uh, we're a little too faster than the recommended speed. It's quite bad. Let's not do that. All right, let's take a look. This is interesting. What is this? What What does number one do? Well, what do we do? All right, I think these are like missiles or something. What is this? Huh. Trying to have a look. Okay, so these are engines, like little engines here. Okay, okay. We'll have to test this stuff out in space. And I love this new feature in the new update. Look how you can see the parts. Like, they get highlighted. That's just fantastic. It's about time. Oh, great. Look at orbit. It's so bad. I'm so sorry. I wasn't concentrating. How oh, I think you suck. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't concentrating. It's hard to speak while doing this kind of stuff at times. You know, that's why some people peer record. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. Let's do it. We can do it. Anyway, you know what? I'm just going to skip this part. This is too boring. <laughs> Yay, we did it. We got into orbit. Nice and easy. There was an unusual collision. No idea why. The yeah, TR2C stack separator collided into motor propellant tank. Why? Don't know. Anyway, so we've got to take off these, these here. So I'm going to press spacebar. Ooh, ooh. Damn, instant. They're gone. Look at that speed. Woo! Goodbye. Anyway, that's good. Uh, I would have thought this would get to the moon, but I don't think so now. <laughs> Maybe it's because of that terrible orbit that I did, because I wasn't concentrating. But hey, whatever. Let's test out these unusual missiles. I want to see what number one does. Where did that... Oh. Ooh. 
I know how to do this. We have, but we have to turn off these engines. Let's see. Does this? No, because there's no control now. Okay. So how do we turn off the main engines here? Is there? I should have checked actually. I'll manually turn them off. Give me a second. Uh, shut down. I don't want to decouple the rest of these missiles. Or bullets, whatever. By accident. Okay, there we go. I think it's a little dark, isn't it? What I'll do is I'll time warp. To the other side of Kerbin. Around there. Okay. So if we throttle up and I press one of the action groups, like number two. Number three. That doesn't do anything? Seriously? Why? We asked for a lot. That should have. Whoa, number four is for that. Wait, what? Okay, so number five is for the engines back there. Some of them. Okay, I see. We've got different engines that we can use. Obviously. But damn, you really can't. Really have no control of this? Like, there's no. There is! Look, yeah, we can control this. What am I talking about? Spacebar. Spacebar not working? Activate. There we go. Hey, look at it go. Goodbye. Hmm. Ah, oh, you know what we should have done? I know what we should have done. We should have had the engines activated. Alright, activate the engines first. Throttle up a little. Then decouple them. That's what it was. Yes. That's what it was indeed. And now we have to go manually activate them and you know throw up to actually get this working. Okay, we're too far. Yeah, we gotta back, 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 back. Hey, look at it go. That's cool. Now we just got space, space junk everywhere. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's about it for this episode, guys. I do not think this can land. Nope. It's no, there's no wheels. We double check. I press G. Nope, no wheels. So this ain't landing, unless we crash land, I suppose that will work. Let's just out the rest of these. Okay, so 7 is for the solar panels. What does 8 do? 8 does something? Nope. 9? No. Okay, that's very cool. That's good enough, right? You can recharge a little. Wait, I swear there's something missing on the right here. Where is... Did that break off or something? I think something's missing. Where is the solar array? <laughs> when did we lose it? What? It's not there? That's so weird. Okay, well, you know what? That's about it. Thank you for watching. I'd like to thank the two subscribers that have submitted their fantastic designs. They are Rolf Kopta with his amazing name. And one other person. Wait, let me go find that. I gotta find the name. Sorry, sorry. So give me a second. Yes, okay. Oof. Okay, so it's Rolf Kofta, KK Lol, with the awesome name linked to his channel in the description. And Wolf Guide with the Beetle Cruiser. So thank you so much, and see you next time. Take care.